watching as many movies and series whenever and wherever you like. Netflix, Disney Plus and Amazon Prime Video make that possible. Streaming services reshape the film industry and radically change our habits. The power of Netflix and Co. That's our topic on Shift today. And the Oscar goes to Netflix. Increasingly, it's streaming platforms that snag the top prizes at award ceremonies and film festivals. Not only do they boast robust slates, but their productions attract big Hollywood names. Like Oscar-winning director Joel Cohn's new film The Tragedy of Macbeth, an Apple TV Plus co-production. Just one example of how streaming services are gaining power. The COVID-19 pandemic has amplified this trend. Between shuttered cinemas and stay-at-home orders, millions of more people globally started streaming subscriptions. And pro-bingers like myself have four accounts or more. Behind the success, big data. There's uh, something you don't like the looks of. We discovered a very large comet. Oh, good for you. It's headed directly towards Earth. For the satirical disaster movie, Don't Look Up, Netflix assembled a star-studded cast. Based on user data, algorithms predict how successful a production will be. The most promising ones get made. Jesus Christ, you could have just called me. Media scholar Marcos S. Kleiner has been a critical observer of Netflix and co. for some time now. There's the danger, people will say, Netflix viewers are interested in certain actors, issues and directors, which then get promoted. And all the other issues and people that are less visible increasingly disappear. To ensure their productions remain popular, streaming services collect a lot of data, like at what point viewers stop watching any given film, or which scenes from a series they return to again, and what will they watch next. Algorithms help curate personalized recommendations. Users are supposed to get offered exactly what they'd like to see. And it seems to work. 80% of the movies and series people watch on Netflix is selected from the recommendation system. Just 20% of streamed content is found using the search function. And yet, unlike mounting concerns over Facebook and Google, the public seems unfazed by the fact that Netflix and co. collect so much data. Streaming, streaming services have been left out of the critique of the digital transformation. No one thought about how entertainment, the supposedly harmless things that provide some distraction, can tie us even closer to the digital economy. Films and series are about evoking our emotions, and knowing what moves people is very valuable. The market is fiercely competitive, so streaming services need a constant supply of new movies and series that grab viewers' attention. And they're willing to pay a top price. Last year, Netflix reportedly spent 17 billion US dollars on in-house productions. So what does that mean for film directors and how do streaming services impact the production process? Stories are being told in more complex ways, from multiple perspectives. It's a huge advantage of our times that now nothing is unthinkable. One example, the show Dark. The story is complex and confusing. And in spite of that, or indeed because of it, the German Netflix series is a global success. About 90% of streams reportedly came from outside Germany. Streaming platforms are changing German series. Increased investment means more productions and more room for experimentation. Film directors laud this creative freedom, both the possibilities and the competition have never been so great. The, talk is enormous. the pressure's gotten enormous, because now when you produce something in Germany, you instantly face an international audience. The world is watching, and while creativity may be flourishing, competing on the global market is tough. If the aim is for series and films to appeal to viewers worldwide, is there a risk of everything being the same? It's extremely important when going to the international market that the program's identity and place of origin are not obscured. Instead, one should see unique, distinguishing characteristics. That approach is evident in the hit drama Babylon Berlin. The German language crime series is set in Berlin in the 1920s, but appeals to larger audiences with universal themes of heartache and violence. The world is opening up and becoming more international. 
And that's definitely good for storytelling. Storytelling that keeps pace with our times, ever more surprising and courageous. So have streaming services helped diversify films and series? Here's Elizabeth Prommer, Professor of Communication and Media Studies at the University of Rostock in Germany. If we look at gender, then streaming series is not really diverse because we see more men than women. But if we look at other diversity criteria as LGBTQ, sexual orientation, we definitely see more diversity than we see in other um, linear television series. And if we look at ethnicity and race, then we really have to look at it from a international perspective. Because if you only look at the national productions, then we are not really as diverse as we could be. If you really watch African series, Asian series, South American series, then you will see diversity. In my view, being able to watch a series from, say, India is a huge plus. A few years ago, such content was far less accessible. More varied programming is also down to the fact that niche topics can be profitable to streaming services. Revenue comes from subscribers, so I don't have to like everything the platform offers, I just have to like enough content that I'm willing to keep paying each month. Like a series about TV hosts. It may not be a mega hit, but Netflix could find viewers across its 190 countries. But all jokes aside, in general there's a chance to hear more perspectives and voices worldwide. The film Jay Beam on Amazon Prime Video is based on the true story of an Indian lawyer who fought for justice for the torturing and killing of an indigenous man in police custody. It's a strong message in support of India's marginalized communities. Only when we raise our voices against injustices can we stop them from happening. What occurred 30 years ago is still happening. The reason is no one speaking out. We wanted this film to be that voice for the vulnerable. Many Indian series and films on streaming platforms address societal taboos. Made in Heaven is a series about two wedding planners, one of whom is gay. And Delhi Crime tells the true story of a brutal gang rape. These controversial issues are rarely addressed in mainstream entertainment in India. In Africa, filmmakers are hoping streaming services will produce more stories from the continent. We find that most of the content that is coming from the foreign market has already been, it's a story that has already been told, it's just been retold in a different way. The African story has still not been told. So for me, it's they're coming in to tap into the African story, which is still untapped and untold. The first Netflix series to have been produced and filmed entirely in Africa was Queen Sono. This spy thriller from 2020 is part of Netflix's campaign, Made by Africans, Watched by the World. It was an honor to be here, to be getting seen and experiencing being part of the whole world together. 190 countries were coming for you, baby. Netflix is now investing in one country in particular, South Korea, which gave the world Squid Game. The series about adults competing in deadly children's games. In fall 2021, it became Netflix's most popular series ever. It's no surprise that the next hit series from South Korea followed quickly. The Korean horror drama Hellbound is among Netflix's most watched series. It was originally created as a web comic for smartphones, known as a webtoon in South Korea. <laughs> It's a format where you can read one episode in three minutes while waiting for your friend or on your commute. So we have to captivate our readers in a very short amount of time. That means almost every scene has to contain elements that grab the reader's attention while keeping a fast narrative pace. Streaming platforms have helped make webtoons popular in other countries. Such global success means there's increasing demand to adapt these Korean comics into series. It's the moment tech companies like Kakao and Naver have been waiting for. Our strength is that we have a lot of ongoing projects. On many platforms, when a hit series ends, 
there aren't enough alternatives available for people to consume. We have hundreds of Webtoon projects that are still ongoing as of now. Webtoons are really addictive and a booming business. The company Neva plans to produce 10 to 20 Webtoons for streaming platforms this year. That means plenty of content for me to binge watch. Do you do that too? Watch episode after episode, unable to stop? We spoke about this phenomenon with Emil Steiner from Rowan University in the US. Netflix is built on binge watching. Netflix promoted the idea that it differentiated itself from broadcast television because of the ability to binge watch. Uh, and what's so interesting about it is that this sort of expression of freedom, of control that uh, viewers got through, through Netflix and, and other streaming platforms is to consume as much as possible. How this impacts our mental health depends on whether we're cringe watching or feast watching. If you are cringe watching, you, we can predict that you are going to regret the experience. We have data, uh, empirical data that can, gener uh, that can show that. So cringe watching is typically solo, accidental and distracted. Cringe watching often leaves us feeling guilty. Feast watching has healthier connotations. Feast watching is typically planned, social and attentive. So if you are planning out what you're gonna watch in advance, you are social, so either you have people with you while you're watching or you are engaging online with other people while watching. Uh, and finally, you are paying attention, you are attentively watching, particularly for shows that demand that for entertainment, you will have more positive outcomes. Studies show that as long as it's within reason, conscious consumption prevents us from feeling guilty. So, uh, you know, just like a, a any feast, if you overeat, it can feel like you are no longer in control. Uh, so again, binge watching is about that negotiation of control uh, that now has been given to the viewer as never before. If I were to get another helping as often as I decided to watch just one more episode, I probably wouldn't fit into this studio. What's your take? Do you use streaming services? Are you concerned that our data is used by companies to decide what to make? Or do you see it as a chance for more diverse content. Tell us what you think. Bye-bye.